to listen having a budget is like having I would say I don't say a leash around your around your spending risk. One thing that I have tried to do is to look for the most affordable option in the style of fabric you want. So it is a slightly sunny day so the sun is going to keep going in and out i just want to apologize for the color changes that this video is going to have because i can already feel it i can feel it coming so just be aware of that but welcome back to the channel my name is priscilla i'm a nigerian woman to a designer based in the uk hello k divas it's been a hot minute since i actually sat down and did like a chit chat type video but this video is one that I thought I should make because when I did two previous videos, there were a lot of questions about how do you choose the right fabric? How do you know the right fabric for a specific design? And I just thought I'll come on here and share about seven tips I've picked up over the years on my own or from other people that I have worked with. So if you'd like to find out what these tips are, make sure to keep on watching. Let's get straight into this video. So the first thing I would say you should definitely consider is the season of your customer, the, of your client or of yourself if you are the one making the garment for yourself. So over here in the UK we have four seasons. We have winter, spring, summer and then autumn compared to a tropical country like Nigeria where you have the wet and the dry season. So over there in Nigeria it's is really warm, relatively warm all year round. So fabrics like wool and cashmere I don't really think they are necessary in terms of like making coats and jackets because you don't really need it because it's not that cold over there. So definitely consider the season if you are a designer who is working on a specific season as well. If you're working on a spring summer collection, there are just some fabrics that you would not just include like really thick heavy fabrics because you're making garments for a warmer season and if you're making garments for a colder season you would just stay away from fabrics that are really thin light and would not keep your wearer warm so season is really really important and i think is really on top of the list because it almost dictates the type of fabric that you pick straight off the box so the second factor that you should consider is the country and this goes sort of goes hand in hand with the season. If you are a designer based in a tropical country, which means the weather is relatively warm all year round, sis, like your life is so beautiful, the weather is so nice, you just have to, you know, work with your cottons, your silks, your chiffons, and you can be very playful with print and pattern because I've noticed people just like to wear more color when the sun is out. I can't really explain the psychological effect or the reasoning behind it, but that's what I've seen even here in the UK and back home in Nigeria. People just gravitate towards like brighter prints, lighter fabrics when the weather is warm. So consider the country you're in, or if you're a designer who's based in a tropical country, but your customer is based in a temperate country or country with like four seasons, then you have sort of the freedom to have both light and thick fabrics in your collection because you know your customer is both local and international. The third factor is budget. So I would say before you walk into any fabric shop, go on any fabric website. Listen, having a budget is like having I would say, I don't say a leash around your around your spending wrist, but it just really guides you like a whole lot. Because what could end up happening if you don't have a budget is you would see this really nice fabric and it might cost 50 pounds a meter, but because you've not really priced your garment or done your costing sheet so you don't really know how much you're working with at the end of the day you might end up spending a lot more money on fabrics that you actually need to do and the moment your cost of production is high the price of your garment is going to be high and not all customers are very willing to you know pass away with 500 pounds for a blouse so just keep that in mind when you're shopping fabrics i would say one thing that i have tried to do is to look for the most affordable option in the style of fabric you want so a good example is silk everybody loves silk everybody wants to wear silk but everybody would not be willing to pay for a silk blouse but they sort of want that silky soft buttery experience so you can look for a fabric that has a satin silk blend or that has a silk polyester blend so the fabric ends up being 
more affordable but you still get the same experience now i know there are some people who are who do not even like wear polyester because they, they have sensitive skin or it's not just something that their brand represents but this is something that you could consider doing finding fabrics that are more hybrid or mixed but still give the same experience another good fabric that does that is viscose or rayon they feel nice and soft on the skin but they are not as expensive as the totally natural counterparts such as like silks and and the rest so just sort of keep that in mind when you're like looking around if you find the silk that you like try also to scope the shop or scope the website to see if they have something really really similar but just a little bit more affordable now moving on to the next factor i would say the style or the silhouette of your garments really really detects the type of fabric you pick so sometimes what people do is actually they go find the fabrics and then come back and design afterwards because they already know what the fabrics feel like what they press like how they stitch like so that is another way that you could consider working with fabrics you can scout your fabrics first choose your colors choose your prints and then go back and do your sketches it's actually totally okay to do that i remember when i was working on one of the blouses for my first collection the sleeves were actually meant to be a puff sleeve i remember that was like the edge row blouse the sleeves was actually meant to be puff on top and then skinny on the bottom but by the time i was done designing my fabric designing my prints the prints did not look nice on stiff fabric so the colors will come out right so the fabric that actually had the colors looking the most vivid and the most sharp were more silky fabric so i had to change the sleeves of that blouse so the fabric and the design they actually work well together so i ended up making it a balloon sleeve that sort of came down wide towards the bottom and then had like a fitted cuff there so just be flexible don't it's not the end of the world if you have to change switch up a design just have fun with the whole creative process but just know that you can actually pick your fabrics first before designing all right so moving on to the next factor i would say considering your client's needs is actually very important if you are doing sort of like bespoke custom made to order if your client has sensitive skin if your client does not like see-through clothes if your client does not like big prints if your client does not like stripes those are things that you should actually ask during your consultation so when you're going to find the fabrics you just have that at the back of your mind that okay i know she's sensitive to wool or wool makes her itchy but she wants a suit i need to find a fabric that behaves like wool but doesn't have wool in the fibers so all those little things just keep in mind i kid you not there was a lady who actually wanted a pair of tailored trousers and she did not want wool and i was like sis why are you just giving me misha the possible seven but it actually worked out at the end i found a really nice sort of like cotton blend that felt really nice and stable and we were able to get the trousers done for her so just ask your ask your clients the correct questions take note of them and when you're going to source for your fabrics just please keep that in mind it will just save you lots and lots of headache so the next thing to consider is your brand's aesthetic if you are an independent designer or if you are someone sourcing fabrics for a brand is that brand more minimalist do they like color do they like print are they a sustainable brand do they only work with natural fib fabrics are they a more eccentric brand do they like bright colors bright prints do they like shiny fabrics do they like knits like all of these little things what i do when i go fabric shopping is i actually have a list of specific things that i want the colors i'm looking for what i want the fabric to feel like what i want the fabric to wear like because there are some fabrics that you drape on the body and it just falls nice and lightly there are some that would actually hold your weight really well there are some that are sort of like an in-between of both so when i'm actually looking because it can be so overwhelming you just walk you just walk into a fabric shop and it's like oh my god i'm just looking for a white cotton why are they like two million white cotton fabrics like I just want one but by the time you start touching the fabrics because you know exactly what you're looking for in terms of the feel in terms of the fiber content in terms of how it folds how does it wrinkle all those little things it would really really make shopping for fabrics a lot easier when i was shopping for my brand fabrics I shopped both online and in store so with the online shopping i actually ordered samples first 
I don't just buy fabrics like that too, especially online. I'll order fabrics first. If I haven't shopped from the fabric store before, I'll order like a small sample, either like a small square or half a meter. Then I would actually wash the fabric to see if it bleeds. I would stitch the fabric to see how it stitches. I would press it to see if it shrinks. Because when I know all these things, I know what to put in the care label of the garment if I decide to go with that specific fabric. When I was shopping in store, I remember there was a red fabric I got. Oh, horror stories. I actually got the entire roll of that fabric without testing that fabric. I got home and the moment I put that fabric in the washing machine, the way that fabric bled, I just felt a part of my soul just like just shrinking it was so sad because i bought an entire roll of like 10 15 meters and i could not use that fabric that fabric is still in my <laughs> it's still in my cupboard and i can't use it because i know that's the type of thing that when you make something for a client and they wash it it's not a good look for your brand so please 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 test buy a meter buy a square if the shop allows you to do that test it for for color bleed for shrinking and how it stitch and how it folds as well so the last thing to consider and it still sort of ties along with your brand aesthetic or brand values is sustainability are you going to be the designer who only works with natural fabrics are you going to make a conscious effort to look for fibers that are sort of a mixture of natural and synthetic or like man-made so you're not exactly buying totally synthetic are you going to be a brand who makes a conscious effort to buy exactly the amount of fabric that you need because i have been there you'll just be like mm, i know the tops are only need two meters of each but let me just buy five meters extra just in case which is a good thing but what then ends up happening if you don't make those tops is you have a lot of fabric with you that if you don't use you just end up either throwing away or they just sit in your cupboard for a very very long time so buying the exact amount of fabric you need considering the fiber content of your fabric is really important as well or if you want to be one who encourages your your consumers to actually you know use their garments for as long as possible or if they don't need it they should send it back to you and then you can do upcycling projects which i've actually been enjoying a whole lot thank you guys so much for i think my patchwork dress has gotten over twenty thousand views in about a week which is actually insane so i know you guys actually enjoy these upcycling projects as well i just find them so therapeutic to do very useful to inform you as well on the importance of sustainability and reducing the amount of waste that you generate yourself because it starts with me it starts with you it starts with all of us at fashion creative so those are all of the tips i covered in this video i went through the season the country budget i'm sort of looking down because i have them written down here the season the country your price the style and silhouette of your garments your clients needs your brand aesthetic as well as sustainability but if there are any tips that you feel that i should have covered please 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 share them down in the comment section down below because i would actually love to know and someone might find it just as useful if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up so i know i need to keep making you know more informative and useful videos like these in combination with my tutorials and i'll do my next video have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye